we want to set a link to link1.html. Well, let's just try link1.html. And let's make this say, actually, let's leave this one for reference. Copy and paste is your friend. Let's do a couple more links here. So let's make this link1.html. Now it has to be exactly the same. If I had put a capital L there, I would need it to be the same. Link1, now I put a capital L in the headline. I don't think I put it in the folder name, but if I did, oops, see that? See how there's a capital in that folder name? That means there has to be a capital in this reference. It has to match exactly. Otherwise, it'll work on my Windows computer or my Mac. It won't work on my Unix server. That's what I was talking about, the case sensitivity. Sorry to give you an advanced tip in the middle of a basic lesson. Let's see if we can make this work. So now I have a link to Digital Family and I have link one. Let's put a paragraph tag around there just so that it has a little break. Remember, just p tags for paragraphs. But there won't be any space over here until you do. So now I have a paragraph around there. You can see what we're doing. So I have link one. Let's save this. Let's preview it in a browser. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's go down here to my links and let's click on link one. Hey, there's the link one page I just created. Because I just said browser in the same folder. There's something called link one. I want you to go there when somebody clicks on it. Clear as mud. Just the file name if it's in the same folder. OK. So I'll bet you could guess that we would do link two the same way, right? Same thing for link two. Oh, what did I just do wrong? I have an opening p tag and a closed p tag. Then I have a closed p tag with no open p tag. I'm going to have trouble. So let's make sure we have paragraph tags consistently. So this is why you have to be really careful in HTML. You really have to make sure that you've got that lined up. So if we want to link two, same thing. Link two, link two. Cool. All right. Let's see if that works. Remember, we're just looking at, we're going to go to Safari just for variation. That goes to link two. OK. So I have a link to link one. I have a link to link two. Notice that the color of those links changed when I clicked on them. You know, there's the visited link color and the active link color. That's going to matter a lot in CSS. Because if you want to change those colors, we're going to do that a little differently than if we just wanted to change the color of a headline. And you'll see why that's a little more complicated in CSS. Not a lot, but a little bit. So, OK, I have a link one, I have a link two. But what about that one that's in a subdirectory, that, that link three? So if I clean up this code just so it looks, no, clean up code. Here, I'm really just cleaning it up visually. Clean means you don't have extra code, superfluous code, styling you don't need. So link three, where's my link three page? If I go back over to my files panel where I can see it, or you can just look in your um, operating system at the folder structure and see. I have something called subfolder, and inside it, I have link three. Now, if we found the image by putting the images folder slash image name dot JPEG, you might deduce, and you'd be right, that the way we link to this would be the name of the folder slash the name of the file. So link three dot HTML is the name of the file, but the folder is called subfolder slash, right? So now if I save this and preview it, and I click on, whoops, I still called it. Uh, I didn't change the name. Is anybody watching my back here? Somebody at home is cringing like Janine. OK, link three now says link three, so we can tell. Link three is inside that folder. I just saved that so we can see it. And I can go back here. I'm going to make this say link three, so you can better follow what I'm doing. So now we have link one, link two, link three. Link three is in the subfolder link three. When I preview this now, and I click on link three, we go to the link three page. 